You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, Substituting for Sir Richard Windworth, this is Cat Bayless announcing for AfterBuzz TV's The Bachelor. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the news and gossip. Now, if you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. Now, that's 424-256-1729. And now, picking up where the show leaves off and that buzz continues, it's AfterBuzz TV's The Bachelor. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Bachelor Season 16, Episode 2. Hello, hello. Hey, everyone. I'm JC. I'm Candon Bliss. And today we're also joined by Mr. Kevin Undergaro himself on the couch. Yes, (laughs) I see you. Don't be shy. I see you. I just can't hear you. Camera doesn't lie. Yes. Welcome, guys. We're here to give you not just a recap, but we're going to talk to you about the stuff that goes underneath who is the you know who are the good guys who are the bad guys the stuff that gets under our skin yes yeah, so <laughs> let's get into it guys we have a lot of stuff to cover so i'm sure you guys saw last week and you said what's going to happen this week well they upped the ante once again they did by the storytelling they did i think ben upped his ante too yes for sure <laughs> so today we open up the show in sonoma Sonoma, yes. my place of the place of dreams it's for your, me. It's your yeah. place of I've zone. never been th- that far north in California, and I'm just dying to go. I'm a wino, so. Uh, f- see, you could have been on the show. <laughs> I this should have been on The Bachelor. You might. I have a boyfriend. Sorry. <laughs> you might be the mystery woman. Uh oh. Oh yes. I might be. A little, we'll we'll bit, tease that. Tease that. Talk about that later. <laughs> for sure. And of course, stay tuned at the, for later on the show. We're going to talk about wh- what are they really like when the camera comes off, especially Ben. Is he as? Is he really yeah. that good of a guy? Yeah, is he Prince Charming and is Blakely, Courtney, all these other girls just as menacing as they are on the show? We're going to discuss okay. that a little bit later, but first off, let's start with his hometown of Son- Sonoma. Sonoma. Sonoma was very cute. You oh, know, yeah. it was a very quaint city. Uh, reminded me a lot of home, little Fairhope, Alabama. Kind of a cute downtown. Um, you know, lots of little old shops and antique stores and little wine bars and things like that. It was very quaint, and I, I enjoyed it. Kind of a sleepy little town, but um, maybe they wake up at night with a couple glasses of vino. <laughs> it was building the romance. It like, was. Seriously, this... This season, I mean, the guy is Prince Charming. He is. He looks kind of like Prince Charming, you know, with the swoopy hair. He's like the dark, the dark features, and of course, he makes wine. Like who, who doesn't think that that's charming? <laughs> yeah, it's he's very Disney Prince Charming. So first off, he actually they started with the uh, the first date. The they first a, date. Yes. The first one on one date of the whole season. So here yes. it goes. It begins. <laughs> yes, and the first date car- card went to one of our faves, Casey. You- Yes. She's my favorite, I think. She really is. I just think she's she's just good. I could still see the little spark, the little twinkle in her eye, and she's got that little southern accent. And yeah, oh, she worked the southern oh, charm. Oh, she worked it, and he loved it. It was beautiful. It was mm-hmm. absolutely... I, I'm i a Latin romantic, so I'm sorry. I was in the <laughs> moment. It was... Oh, my gosh. Everything that... Ha- it was basically like almost like a greeting card. It just yeah. played out perfectly i mean the the town was sleepy mm-hmm. you know the first they you know they went for the romantic dinner and there was did you notice that there were no people no people that's why i said it was sleepy it was a very yeah. sleepy town not a lot of people out they were kind of the only ones but there was like a few little lights on and it, it was it was perfect it was a movie scene they they treated it like a movie scene i mean they both were like prince charming and princess like that was the story that tonight 90, for me okay 98% romantic 2% cynic because I'm going to say, Cynic. yes, because did they cl- did the producers clear everyone out, clear that street out? It was just too perfect, though. Sometimes it was just there was no one there. There was no one there. But I mean, maybe maybe everybody goes to bed. You know, it's not L.A. It's not like the you know city that never sleeps. Fine. Point taken. Now. <laughs> but I loved the part where they went into the theater and after the dinner, after the dinner, when they went into the theater and there was no one else around. And I called it. You can all <laughs> remember that. She I did. knew when we walked into that, when they walked into that theater, 
that there was going to be something very personal going on because he said he kind of teased it at the beginning that it was going to be a very personal date and that he was really interested to see kind of how she took everything because of the things that are important to him. And he wanted to kind of see if the things were important to her too. So I knew immediately it was going to be videos of him and his dad, which of course they got in there and it started off with videos of Casey and her dad. Right. And it was kind of happy and funny and she was cute and, you know, walking around with her little bows in her hair and stuff. And then videos of Ben and his father came on, and that was a little heart heart wrenching for me. That bothered me a little bit. It did. It was really intense for a first date and for a kind of a dramatic opening to the season for their dates. Right. But it 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 makes me think more of him. I think because he's kind of getting the important stuff out. Mm-hmm. It's like this is me. This is what's important to me. This is my heart, like on the table for the taking. See. I agree with you partly with that because yes, it was. He, everyone knows his story. Everyone, mm-hmm. know, a lot of people know he lost his dad. It was covered in last season's, you know, in the right. bachelor, bachelor, Bachelorette. But for me, coming from personal experience, I I lost my mom in a in a tragic way as well. Oh wow! And when I saw that, it actually it almost for me cheapened the moment. Like they, mm-hmm. it was almost like a no offense to home extreme makeover, but they just like yeah. hit the heart heartstrings so hard. That I'm just like, where are they? Where are they going to go to next? Yeah, they must have something up their sleeve that is just going to blow every other season out of the water. Because right off the bat, I mean, the first date, they're they're playing that, and I I, I actually my eyes did well up. I, yeah, I, really, I did I, too. I, I know, felt it. Everyone I, in the room I felt the emotion. I wanted to kind of be there and like give him a hug, you know. But it it kind of made everyone I think relive the tragic moments in their life. Right. You know, I mean, obviously, we've all experienced things that are difficult and that are hurtful. And I think just seeing somebody else in pain made everybody kind of in pain and, and sad. I don't know. I was very sad for a few minutes. So then once again, that makes Ben more likable, more relatable. Right. We, and he's very open. Mm-hmm. That means that he's he's really willing to put his feelings and his emotions on the table and wear his heart on his sleeve like not a lot of guys can do. Right. So, I mean, I admire him for that. And I think... I think it's it's becoming a trend maybe in in Bachelor and Bachelorette to kind of put those moments out on the table because I don't really remember getting that deep with some of the first Bachelors and Bachelorettes. It's getting more and more emotional and more but but it makes them seem more relatable like you said because we all experience those moments. We all know what being sad and having tragic things happen in our lives feels like. So maybe it, it makes us feel closer to him, closer to the situation, wanting to root for him and find his happiness, right? Yes, I agree. Yes, <laughs> I mean, that's, you, that's you the slightly, show, right? Yeah, but uh, all he needed, all he was missing was like a tractor or something. Well, he had a tractor, in and another that's date. a tease. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. But was it a perfect date? I think it was. I think it was wonderful. I think it was a lot for a first date, a lot of emotion, a lot of intenseness. But I, but I liked it. I liked it a lot. I thought that they were a good couple. They had chemistry. They were yes. natural. I kept writing natural, comfy, goofy, funny. And my big thing was they they taught each other things. That's, I think, the key to this date that we haven't touched on yet is that they taught each other something. He taught her um, – what did he teach her how to do? I'm, I'm trying to – she taught know. him how to twirl the baton. That thank you. You know that's right. Yeah, the baton. Oh, he he was teaching her how to play the piano. That was really. I missed that. I I I blinked and I missed the little. It was just cute to see that they were kind of like, oh, I don't know how to do this. Let's you know goof our way through it, and it's funny and sweet, and they're teaching each other something. And like I said, that's like step twenty in the the dating process. I don't. I remember reading like some book, and it said you know teach each other something, and like that's healthy for a relationship to kind of somebody take the reins and show the other one how to do something and then vice versa. Um, I think it bonds you together right. really well. They've been doing it last week when he had to take uh, Lindsay off the horse. Yeah. I remember he picked her up like Prince Charming mm-hmm. once. They really they really are focusing on breaking down those walls, yeah. making it more just from an emotional point where just women are going to, and some men, I'm one of them, will be, I like that. I yeah. really do. But you brought up something, I want to touch upon it, at the theater. When they mm-hmm. showed the stuff about Ben's dad, mm-hmm. And she asked him, she asked him, when was the last time you, was it you listened to your yeah. father's voice? He said that it was emotional for him to hear his father's voice. And instead of her saying, well, when did he pass away? Or how long's he been gone? She said, how long's it been since you've heard his voice? And I was just like, that is the sweetest right. little, little, it's just so little, but it was the sweetest thing I've ever heard for somebody to word that question so intimately. And I just thought it was wonderful. Like, I have goosebumps right now just, like, thinking about it. 
<laughs> I'm a hopeless romantic too. And that's what she said. She said she was a hopeless romantic and that, you know, wherever her love takes her, she's willing to follow it. And that was just like, I know. <laughs> and I think, and, he's, and, so, and they, sounds like they both are because mm-hmm. he as well. So, I mean, this, that's, it's already a storybook. It's she's, already a storybook. She's like the hero, you know, like the heroine. And yeah. because coming up, we have some other dates that we're going to talk about that didn't, didn't sit very well in the room, but that's for later. <laughs> but let's move on. Let's actually move on to the, the next date, which was the group date. The group date. You yeah. know, I was I was pleasantly surprised with the group date. Um, what it, they So they went, there was eight, eight of them. Was there eight of them or I, more than that? I lost track. There I were, lost track. There were a lot of them. Yeah. It was kind of 12. I started to write the names and I yeah, lost track. I lost track. Like five. Uh, I think there was like 12, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and they all came to like downtown Sonoma. And he teased them with the playwright thing, telling them they're going to put on a play. Right. And what, who did who did the playwrights turn out to be? Kids, like six year olds or something. Yeah. But you know, they took it really well. I I thought that they all kind of had a good attitude. They were willing to kind of be embarrassed. Most of them. Some were goofy, and some were Blakely. Um, <laughs> yeah, because the, the the girls like they were very sweet. But okay, Blakely first. She, we were talking about her last week. She's. Uh. She is striking. That woman is gorgeous. Now, when I said that Courtney was going to make it far, you said that Blakely was going to make it far. And now I see, I think we both see why they're both going to make it far. <laughs> because they're both the same. <laughs> they're in it to win it. They're in it to win it. And they're all about the winning. That's that's it. That's winning. How yes. long? They said winning three times. Yeah, Courtney. Yeah, yeah we kept count. We kept <laughs> count. We've got some buzzwords we're going to keep throwing you guys yes. that they say over and over on The Bachelor. But Blakely, how okay, you're in front of a bunch of little like six to ten year olds. Mm-hmm. She wears this low cut thing that and she's a uh, very um She's blessed, remember? Thank you. Yes. She said she was very blessed in and, some areas. Yes. <laughs> Big chesticles. Anyway. <laughs> oh all gosh. right. No, no, but she was like doing this stuff and one of the girls called her out on it. The, the one little, the seven, the little se- seven year old yeah. or whatever. What'd she say? She was like, uh the girl with the you know, she made a sign like a, you're yeah. being amply. She's like, I was not a fan. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. kids, and, and and Kevin said, kids always know. <laughs> they start young. They, you know. they know. They can sense it. And I mean, not that she. Maybe she didn't know she was going to be in front of children when she wore her little um, candy striped hoe outfit, which is what one of the girls coined that oh, outfit. Wow. They called her a candy striped hoe. But anyway, you missed. You caught all the stuff. I was like, still. I'm a girl. I catch the dramatic elements more catch, than you. I guess I, ca- I catch. The visuals a little more. Sorry, I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> but then, okay, not okay. But they had them do little improvs, yeah. and that was cute. It, it was you know, cute. They skipped some of the girls because I miss Jamie. Jamie was part of. The, she was one right. of my favorites, and she they, may just not have stood out, yeah, or she, she may have not been horrible. They just picked the best ones and the worst ones to show. Reality TV. There you go. No, but and then they put on a play. There was a second act mm-hmm. from the improv. They went and put up a play where they had a, was it Conquer Prince Charming? It and... was uh, Prince Pino of Bachelorville. Thank you. Which was awesome. Yes. If the kids really came up with that, I would be impressed. I know they were so. Ast- the kids were great. They were great. They were like better actors and actresses and hosts than any of us. Pretty much, they'll be taking our seat. <laughs> they'll next be taking week. our job. Yeah. <laughs> now, did anyone stand out during the the play? Any any cute little? You know, I did get surprised. Jennifer, yeah. Jennifer the redhead. Oh, yeah. I did not like her the first week. I was like, who is she? Like, she's not appealing to me. She stepped up her game this week and really opened herself up. And she was funny and go- she was the weasel. Remember the weasel? That's right. She was the she first was like, one. Yeah, she was kind of like no uh, no limits. She just kind of went all out. And I think it worked for her. It made her seem vulnerable. It made her likable. We finally got to know a little bit who she was, and and I enjoyed it. And I think that she's a sweet girl, and I'll be looking to you know see what else. Yeah, comes you from were her. really rooting for her, you know, because she, she made her. I think with all these women, they're very pretty. Mm-hmm. They're all of them, all twenty five. I don't care. You know, we li- you know we can be yeah, harsh. We on can them. be critical, but they're all beautiful. They're gorgeous, but. Especially women have a hard time with a woman that's beautiful and doesn't isn't can't poke fun of herself. You know, be self deprecating. Mm-hmm. That's gonna win. Like the, that's why I noticed that you changed your tune last yeah. week. She was oh she's forgettable. Yeah. And this week she's like, you, you she warmed up your heart. Yeah. So so she she definitely stood out. It does a lot. I think and and I saw with a few other girls like Courtney, I found her less attractive more and more. 
we'll mm-hmm. get we can get into that. But it's funny how the longer things go, and even Ben, like I like Ben more this week than I liked him last week. Ben's a sweetheart. He's a he's a he's a great he's a good genuine guy. You know, hopefully I'm not getting suckered <laughs> in here too. But I believe him. I think he wants love, and I just well, we had two extra people in the room today. They all got suckered <laughs> into the Bachelor. <laughs> it's doing it, but okay. Everyone did well, yes. But who ended up winning the date? Who ended mm. up winning the rose for the group date? Well, that's a long story. So Blakely ended up winning the rose, right, on the group <laughs> date. But she—that was her goal. She went after it like nobody's business. <laughs> and you know, there she... wasn't as much drama at the group date that mm. I than I expected. Like there really, there really wasn't a lot of drama on the date. Everybody was very well mannered and very encouraging to each other, but. On the, at the little cocktail party, the you know the clothes came off, the bathing suits came out, they got in the pool, they had some more champagne, and it was like Blakely on the hunt. <laughs> yes, she took him into the pool. She took him into the pool, and 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 I felt really bad because Jennifer had that one on one time with him, and they seemed to have a good connection, and they did they kissed, and he would right. he kind of responded to her. And 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 like wanted more, and you I was really like, think that. I do. I think you're, that's the girl in you. No, I saw I think- he like grabbed her face and like it. I could fe- I felt like he was into it. And then when Blakely kind of attacked him, he, he just did kinda, not attack him. She did. She did not attack. She attacked. She was him. assertive. Yes, she was assertive. She jumped in the pool he and didn't like mind. L- no, he didn't mind. But I mean, really, what would you guys do? You're a dude. Yeah. I- you're do yeah. You're not gonna run away, right? Absolutely not. Yeah, exactly. No. So I think that okay, she's beautiful. Whatever. I'm sure he likes her. Obviously, he gave her a rose, but she did go after it, and she made it pretty difficult for anything else to happen. But I didn't see him respond in the same way that I saw him respond with Jennifer. So that was the only reason I was surprised. Um, cause I wasn't surprised that Blakely was kind of out there and like putting on that sex appeal and being really, um, confident, but I was surprised that Jennifer had the confidence to kind of, mm. you know, initiate the conversation. Okay. So I was surprised it's gonna that play she, out. Yeah. it's, it's, I think there's a it's lot a <laughs> more into that, you know, into the dichotomy be- between those two contestants. Maybe. I, I definitely think so. That's, it's laying down the foundation. You know, okay. is he going to go the sweet route or is he going to go the bad girl route? Well, that seems to be a trend. <laughs> Speaking of bad girls now, there was another one-on-one date, and that was with your favorite, mm, Courtney, Courtney, the model, who kept on saying last week, I'm a model, mm-hmm. I'm a model, I'm a model. Yeah, we get it. You're a model. You're beautiful. And But this time, Ben wanted to take her out of the element of the big city. Mm-hmm. He took her out to the Redwoods. Yeah, out to the middle of pretty much nowhere where there was like a river and... He, he brought the dog, Scotch. Scotch. That was cute. I like the dog. Such a pimp move. I oh, yeah. He, I, love, I love that he had the dog. It was cute. And, you know, it's funny. And this is something I saw with Courtney. Um, she was very likable in his presence. She's done that. She's done that before. Mm-hmm. We said, like, oh, in that moment, I really liked her. That's what I said mm-hmm. the last time. But she's not that person. I mean, obviously, we, like... We can talk about that later, but it's just amazing to me how they, they cut from her date with him and she's like sweet and natural and like, oh my God, I love the Redwoods and the dog and whatever. And then. Did you notice, uh, forgive me, did uh, you notice that when the dog was, it started shivering, got really cold, he got a blanket and swaddled mm-hmm. the dog. I guarantee all the women in America just like swooned and oh, some yeah. guys too, but they just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. he's like the super guy. But, you know, I thought I thought she reacted well to the dog being there, too. Like, when the dog kind of, like, interrupted their kiss, she just, like, played with the dog. Like, she didn't be like, okay, get away. Let me kiss you some more. So, like, I liked her in okay. a lot of ways on the date. But, I mean, when um, – this was huge for me. When, when Casey, who had the first one-on-one date, was reading the date card for Courtney, she said, you know, Courtney, you have the date card. And then she read the date card. And Courtney was like – how did that taste coming out of your mouth? <laughs> that was the line of the season. So I was far. like, what just happened? Did you really just say that? Who does that? You know, she it's she's playing the game. She's get it. She's playing the game. She's doing that to get underneath other girls' skin. I'm like gagging right now because like just thinking about her saying that. I, I think I would have I don't know what I would have done to her. Last I, week we talked about <laughs> commandment one of reality dating. And what is it to get the girls talking about other girls when they're in front of Ben because it takes them out of their game their their their, connect, their connection to Ben that's true and Courtney's getting underneath their skin same thing with we'll get to Blake a little bit later but 
they're getting underneath their skin. So it rattles them. You have Jenna crying last, last week. You know, it just sets them off. It opens up their time with Ben. It's a perfect setup. I guess. They know how to play the game. I just, it just irks me that those kind of girls get, you know, get what they want. I mean. But it uh, makes you want to watch more. Like I do. I want to see what happens. I mean, the Courtney and Ben seem to have a, a good date, and I can see why he likes her. But I don't think it's real. Okay. And we, we, we saw that because after they went from the, the, the little river part of the date, they mm-hmm. had a little dinner, and it was just like in the middle of the fee- of a field. Yeah. Like, or was it underneath the tree? It was like underneath the trees and in the vineyard. They rode on the tractor. Yeah. <laughs> there, yes, and he pulled out the tractor. <laughs> Except it wasn't a big green tractor. It was a big red tractor, which is not what the song says if oh you my, listen to country music. Oh, my gosh. So you're going to knock him for the Take tractor. <laughs> No, anyway, okay. That's a plug. For so, <laughs> no, but I wanted to bring up that that conversation that they had after dinner, where she asked them. Oh, she yeah. asked them to tell me about yourself, and mm-hmm. she, you know, it seemed like she wanted to go deeper. Mm-hmm. Was she playing the game? I think she was trying to get the attention off of her because he wanted to dig deeper to her, and I don't think she wants to go that deep because I think he's going to figure out if he goes that deep that it's fake. So, so I think she was she was projecting, but so um, would you say it was a performance? Because remember she she mm-hmm. talked about herself, and we made that little note that just there was she wasn't real. It wasn't like really real. So it could lead to one of two things: either she's a really emotionally closed off person, or she was giving a performance, right? Playing into the model actor thing. She from basically LA. did the typical. Oh my gosh, I'm a model in L.A. and like I found underwear in my boyfriend's bed, and he was a photographer, like. Like, those are stories that we've heard over and over again. I'm sure they happen, but it was just very like, yeah, that's like my past. And so I'm like open now. So you're not buying <laughs> it. You are not buying Courtney. I'm not buying her. I know people like her. I'm mm-hmm. not buying it. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> All right. So, okay. So we can say that he actually, did he give her a rose? He yeah, gave he, Courtney a rose. Yeah, I just mm. want you to say because then you would bother you. It does bother me. <laughs> Don't make me make that face. <laughs> Make lines in my forehead. <laughs> okay. So he gave her the rose. So basically, we have Casey with the rose, mm-hmm. Courtney with the rose, mm-hmm. and Blakely who got the group date rose. Right. So now we've we've got it settled. We're moving on to the cocktail party. Yes. And the drama. I think this is where the show is really the show. <laughs> it really is. This is where everything kind of comes together. Yeah. No. All the girls. Like last week it was Monica and Jenna. Yeah. You know, they were very subtle today. Jenna was? It, well, until the end. Until the cocktail party, they were very... Monica was very normal. Right, and that's what I was wondering. Monica, hope, we'll see. I'm sure next week they'll bring her back in because she didn't get a lot of time. She got right. she got enough time to be really sweet in front of Ben, mm-hmm. which she last week she was very shy in front of Ben, really quiet, but remember whenever she had screen time, she was she was kind of like Blakely. I thought she was going to be a villain, but I, I yeah. don't think she is. I think it, I don't know what, it, you never know what happens in that first night. She was trying to make out with Blakely the first week. She was, that was weird. See, okay. this is, we gotta, oh my God. we gotta check, we gotta check the people also, we're like the voice of people that are watching the show because let's not forget that last week she was trying to make out with another girl and that's all true. of a sudden we, oh her. she's a sweetheart yeah that's true I forgot about that yeah she's weird okay yeah, not see? a sweetheart anymore <laughs> so, so I'm saying there's so many oh, this is what I'm getting there's so many villains in th- that are, there are and then there's sweet little Ben is he gonna make it through all of this to get to that one it's almost like um, isn't that the point s- of the show so we root for him to find the good ones it's like Scott Pilgrim versus the world he's gotta defeat all the seven <laughs> even ev- evil girls to get to the you know the the sweetheart, which we think could be Casey. I think so. I think there's a few sweethearts. I mean, he pulled at the cocktail party, he pulled Lindsay aside and just to kind of reassure her that right. you made a good impression on me. I didn't give you time this week because I know that I, you know, I know I want to get to know you better. Mm-hmm. And she she says she drives like a F-350 or something. I was impressed. And, you know, she's one of those really natural, beauty, beautiful girls. And she said something about how awkward it was for her to wear makeup. And, you know, I just, I relate to her because, girl, you know, I do not like this makeup that I have on. But, you know, she's just a good... I I think so far a good person, and I'm I'm looking forward to getting her to getting to know her better in the next couple weeks. Yeah, she's very likable. And mm-hmm. by the way, you look great. Stop with the makeup; you look fantastic. <laughs> if you guys are watching this, she looks great. <laughs> I'm ser- no, but okay, but Lindsay has got that Tinley thing. She's just yeah, a little bit of the whole package type mm-hmm. of deal. And we we keep saying that about her. She's just down to earth, really, just a sweetheart. So, I we think she's going to go far. So she has nothing to worry about. I. We think. Right. So So what happened as far as drama goes at the cocktail party? We had Miss Blankley come back in and 
This is one thing that irks me so much about the show is that the villain girls always, like, they already have the roses. The girls who already have the roses, and this is why I respect Casey, because Casey had a rose. She did not leave her seat. She right. knew, she respected the fact that other girls hadn't had ample time with him, and she was very sweet about that. And I res- I respect that a lot, whereas Blakely already had a rose, but she kept getting wine, and she kept interrupting people's conversations just to, like, get attention. It- That's rule number two. Remember last week we had rule number one of dating reality, mm-hmm. you know, the rules for reality dating. Rule number two should be, if you've already got a rose... Don't go back and no. pester the guy. Don't go back and steal him. She almost stole him three times. Three times. And finally, I think he realized what was going on. And he he looked a little uncomfortable at one point when she pulled him away. He was like, yeah, so. And he kind of kept recapping their other conversation. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, okay, do you need re- like reaffirmation or what's what's going on? Like, <laughs> Yeah, because she was trying to take him upstairs again. Yeah. So. And he was like, I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe he's starting to see through it. I think so. Maybe. You know, and all the girls are on edge because because of Blakely. Right. You know, and but then remember now, Blakely, she felt the heat and she ended up going to the, the luggage room <clears throat> and she hid in the corner and she's How pitiful. So, poor, poor, pitiful me. Yeah, she hid in the lo- luggage room in a corner and she wasn't even crying. She I was, noticed that. She was just <laughs> pretending that she was crying. I was expecting like some tears and she looks up and she's like, I'm fine. It's, so it's it was just, planned. So you're saying oh, it's all part yeah. of her mes- menacing plan. Me? Oh, yeah. Let me just act like I'm emotional. So he'll come give me more attention. It's like, oh, my God. She's in it to win it. She w- is. Once and again. she's making it very clear. And Ben's. But you know what? Even though you say I think Ben's buying it. He's kind of. Bu- we'll see next week. I'm curious about next week because right now it kind of looks like he's buying it. But right at the end, I mean, at the ceremony, she already had a rose. So there's nothing he could do um. about it at this point. Right. So maybe at the cocktail party, I'm hoping that he saw some of the drama and he's like, what's going on? She's hiding in the room. Like, she doesn't know how to communicate to the girls. He made a comment right. that saying that he knows that maybe she can't communicate with the girls well or something. So maybe he's on to something. I don't know that he'll figure it out right away, but I think his alert's up. Yeah, hopefully. But, uh, but but with him saying that, he, you know, he, he's aware about her lack of communication skills with the other girls. But she's not. He knows that she's not there for the other girls. She's mm-hmm. there for him. Right. If you're playing, if, if you're playing the way. I mean, I hate to say playing. I know, but it's a game, right? <laughs> God, it's not a game. It's. It it's shouldn't be. I hope it's not for him. Yeah. So. I really do. And and that's what I was gonna say is that she's not there for the other girls. She's there for him. So hopefully he can. Well, that's what she says. <laughs> look now. Look, um, you're the see now. You're the cynic here. No, I mean, why else? She, she, you would not say those things in the little side interviews. You would not say those kind of things if you weren't. She's in it for him, which means the win. Okay. I don't think it has anything to do with her connection with him because she hasn't once said anything about how like sweet she thinks he is or a quality about him that she likes. It's always been like, I'm going to make him want me more than any of the other girls. It's like a game. It's not real. <laughs> I'm 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 rose tinted glasses guy. I'm going to think it's just clever editing. Mm. <laughs> for now, okay. And maybe for now. next week you'll convince me. Okay. But I'm still holding off. I'm just rooting for her just because she's good looking. She is. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a guy. She, she has a horse face. That's what some of the other girls were saying. That's just hating. That's just hating because you, who who was saying it? I don't Let's, remember. I uh, Miss Pacific Palisades was she saying it? Or, no, no, no. It was. I don't want that horse in my face, Jacqueline. Yeah, Jacqueline. Jacqueline. She, she. They're all gorgeous, but I mean, just Jacqueline had that really funky yeah, green know. dress she on. She looks kind of like a bad mermaid tonight. I don't know. Ouch. <laughs> that 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 hurts. <laughs> now, so now let's let's get to actually. Who got who who got a rose and who didn't? Well, wait a second. Can we please talk about the other girl that cried, Jenna, again? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. And more crying. So we had like Jenna crying. We had Blakely crying. Jenna was like so awkward. She was not forming sentences. That's called drunk. She was. She was a. She was a little drunk tonight. She, she was like, "I'm not a. I'm just a boy, and I'm just not a girl." <laughs> and, and then Jacqueline cuts in right before huh. she could. Try to explain that or just make it worse? I think she was just going to make it worse. I think that the whole <laughs> I'm not a girl thing was enough. Yeah, so p- 
for Jenna. You know, last week she was a train wreck. This week she was a minor train wreck, but a uh, train wreck nonetheless. Yeah, yeah, she was she was a train that ended up choo chooing on out of there. <laughs> yeah, so that, that that brings us to <laughs> that brings us to who made it and who didn't. Who'd you like? Who stayed and who didn't? Uh, okay, well, I mean, I was happy that obviously we had three safe. We had Courtney, Blakely, and uh, Casey that were safe. So. Then there was 13 that got picked. You know, I'm glad Jennifer got picked. Jennifer got the first rose, and I was happy to see that. I think I think she did stand out to him this week. Did a 180. We both did. You know, she was a winning performance. <laughs> I had to. Sorry. <laughs> oh, these poor girls. <laughs> and then next, you know, Erica, and she didn't really do Erica, much. Erica, yeah. However, I think something happens to her next week. Okay. You know, I, I I paid attention to the tease. <laughs> okay. And it looks like someone it has like a little, it's a panic attack or something. And it, okay. it look, looks like I her. was looking at the dress that she was wearing early on the episode. And, you know, so it just, 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 just keep an eye out for that. Okay. So Erica may have some, some more of a, a bigger storyline next week. So Emily, who was the hand sanitizer girl. Oh, the PhD girl, the mm-hmm. rapping PhD girl. Mm-hmm. She wasn't. I think mm-hmm. she, she's she's cute. She didn't have any time with him this week, but neither did Elise, and Elise made it. We're still waiting. We're for still her waiting for her. Make him sweat. Make she's him the personal sweat. trainer from Chicago. Yep. You know? And then after that, um, Nikki, one of our faves. Nikki, one of our faves. Obviously, I'm not surprised about that one. Jacqueline, I'm surprised about. Yeah, I just I'm not I don't, feeling it. Not feeling it. No, but I, but the, she's kind of a mediator. Like maybe they'll keep her. I don't know. So what does that mean? So basically, producers rose. No, no. You think? I don't know. She's not dynamic enough to be to get a. Producer's maybe not rose. yet, but maybe she does end up being. I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna. I'm gonna agree to disagree with you on that one. <laughs> okay. I'll give you that for sure. No, and then Casey. Actually, when she came on, she didn't have a lot of time. But even someone in the room was Casey like, S. Casey S. Casey S. Yeah, I forgot who she was. He, he was like, whoa. You know, because she was... She was looking really cute. Yeah, so I, she's my Stacey Keebler. She is. That's yeah. who she is, yeah. You know. Um, And then Rachel, the uh, girl from New York. Is she from New York? I think she's from New York. Rachel, yes, yes. The one with the bangs. Right, the, the very authoritative voice. The, yes. She was the mediator from last week. Yeah, I like her. I like her. I think I think we're going to see more from her. I think, okay. I think we're going to see more from her. Lindsay obviously made it. Uh, KCS. We talked about Casey. Did yes. we? See, mm-hmm. I have ADD right now. Samantha is Miss Pacific Pals Aids. She got really upset yeah, she, with the whole Blakely issue. So we'll see what happens. There might be some drama with her. I could see her being more of a producer's choice than in the in the fall in the next weeks. Yeah, because she the the way she hates Blakely. It's gonna make She really hates Blakely. Yeah. And I didn't see any drama between the two of them, but like she just hates the whole thing. <laughs> is she <laughs> the one that calls her horse it. face? I think so. She's Maybe she's the one that calls her horse face. Um, you're Jamie. Jamie stayed, which was good. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't see much though. This didn't week. see much of her this yeah. week. Mm-hmm. I, I'm losing interest a little bit. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Well, yeah. maybe she'll come back. And then, of course, we had a uh, Monica. But yeah, mm, I'm know. not feeling it. She's kind of like a Jacqueline for me. I'm she not wants to make it. out with Blakely. So, <laughs> and then that, that left us with that the, the final rose, and we still had mm-hmm. Brittany who we brought her s- grandma last we week. We still had grandma, and then uh, Crier Jenna, Jenna, and then the mom Sean. Sean, the sweetheart mom. Sweetheart mom. <sighs> And um, Grandma. <laughs> yes, Brittany, Brittany got, the, got ro- the rose. I was disappointed to see Sean go. I wanted to get to know her more and and really f- figure out her story. I mean, she didn't really have a lot of time, and um, I thought that was pretty unfortunate. Yeah, because she had a lot of time last week, and you know, she had not the most time, but enough. You kind of knew her. Yeah, and we thought she, she was great. She was grounded. She didn't seem too crazy. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that she had a kid, maybe Ben's just not ready maybe to he, have a yeah, family, maybe he found instant out, family. Maybe he found out about that, and that's just not something he was ready for. Right. So. And like I said, they're starting. They want to paint him as Prince Charming. If right, if they, if they caught him on camera, they probably did have a dialogue, Monica and and Ben. And he he found that out. And he Sean said, and Ben from yeah, I mean Sean yeah. and Ben. Sorry, Sean and Ben. Thank you. She <laughs> always calls me on it. It's <laughs> awesome. No, but you know, instead of getting him on camera saying, you know, I'm not. Right. I don't know if I'm ready for this to alienate. Some of the people rooting for him, they just probably just cut that out. That's right. that's, that's my guess. So. I'm hoping that something. Like, I mean, I would hope that he at least got to talk to the girls that he's you know letting sure go and and figure out if they really are worth keeping or not. 
So, I mean, I was sad to see her go, but then I was very happy to see Jenna go home. <laughs> Why? Oh. It's about the drama. Oh. Can you? I don't know what happened to her. She is a train wreck. Well, we failed to mention, you know, he consoled Blakely. After he consoled Blakely, he went into Jenna's room because mm -hmm. she got her. He was crying. Yeah, in her, in her bed, she had just shut down, and he gave her a pass last week, and he said, that's it. Yeah, you know, once my, you know, once your fault, second my yeah. fault. Yeah, yeah, so I agree. I think he saw it twice, he and he was like, "Oh no, I got to go. <laughs> yeah. You got to go." So, uh, yeah, and she really flipped out when she got cut, which is bizarre. I mean, I'm sorry. I can imagine like emotional tears, like in five more weeks or something. Right. But right now, you've talked to the guy like three times. You know, yes, you've you've made a huge commitment. You've changed a lot of things in your life to to be there. But like. How they haven't even really had a conversation. They haven't been on a real date. I don't understand the emotional connection that that Jenna was kind of. She's the overanalyzer. Remember, that's her blog. That's that's what that's she does. That's true. I so. just I, I just thought it was way overboard. Like she, it felt like it was the end of the world for her. And I'm right. like, you really don't know this guy. Like you've really just been focused on the girls this whole time. I and she just baffled. I just wanted to, her to stay on just because. Just have so many villains. I think it, it just would make it better. I mean, usually we only have like one villain a season. No, no, we already have like at least two or three. That's fantastic. No. Yes. No, because then it's bad and he doesn't get the good one. No, but look, look, look okay. But Unless it's all bad ones and then one good one and then you know the good one's going to win. I'm, I'm, think of it. It's like the saint that's he's just got all these demons that are just coming up and he's just going to stay true. And it's, it's going to give every woman hope that a man... Give us some Where credit. Where did you get this stuff? You come up with this in your own head? Yes. Oh Why not? I'm a romantic. Why not? Arr. Yeah, I guess I'm, I guess I'm hooked. I <laughs> but, guess you are. No, he's going to just make it through all of, like It's almost like slaying all the dragons to get to the princess. You know, I hope so. I really do. Because I'm rooting for him and I want him to be real. I don't want to hear, you know, four weeks after The Bachelor is finished that, you know, he and this other girl have broken up because, like, drama and tabloids and whatever. I'm over that. And I, I want some real stuff. Well, you know, the way they tease the finale is that he possibly ends with no one. Really? Yeah. That's oh, that's the way they were playing it. And he was heartbroken once already. Could it happen twice? Oh, my gosh. That is what's making this the show. That's, that's perfect. You're See? antagonizing me. Sorry. <laughs> No, but guys, we're going to go to commercial and right after the uh, right after the break, we're going to talk about what are they really like on and off camera? Is Ben really that perfect? And is Blakely really a real, real Satan? And then we're going to give you our predictions for the coming weeks. Stay tuned. After Buzz TV. Hi, I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And, like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag co-workers about it at the water cooler. Then, I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzzTV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds, like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? All right, we are back. We're going to go into our special segment now. What are they like on and off camera, especially Mr. Ben? Is he really the Prince Charming? Oh, man. How am I going to break this down? Now, I talked about it in between Bachelorette and Bachelor that a certain Jennifer Love Hewitt actually had the hots for Ben. Okay. And she went after him. She tweeted him. And they actually had a little <clears> Twitter <throat> thing going on. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, and nothing came out of that because supposedly I, they were getting him ready for this season. So I think he's not look he's not perfect. He's not okay. I'm going to say he's 98% Prince Charming and 2% 
You know, he's got a, he's got a little bad streak in him. Okay. Because what I've heard from Ashley from the Bachelorette from last season, she said that Ben was actually he had the, he was the the funniest. He had this dry sense of humor huh. that everyone thought he was dull. And you know, right. all last season, everyone God they picked him. He's going to be the dull guy. She said he is hilarious, and he like they don't they don't show. Right. All of Ben, and I'm sure they're probably doing this now. I I think he's still the Prince Charming, but he's got a little bit of bite to him. Well, what did he say to um? Oh gosh, did he say it to Courtney that he had like this party streak? Mm-hmm. Remember that during the date? Exactly. He said that um he was his first job. I want to say out of college was with like an internet marketing firm, and he, mm-hmm. I guess he was making a lot of money. He right. was young. He didn't really know what to do with it. I'm not sure if that was when his tragedy happened with his dad or something. But it probably just all kind of came together and he said he was partying a lot and like going out and spending a lot of money and just kind of being frivolous. And um, then he had like this epiphany when he did The Bachelorette with um, with Ashley. With Ashley. Right. So that was interesting. I wasn't expecting that from him. I wasn't expecting him to be the party type and to to kind of admit that he's kind of a bad boy, maybe. That's per- seriously that that, that uh, the, and the fact that he's not perfect makes him just all that more perfect i guess i mean i guess i was a little disappointed to hear that but i mean really yeah because it makes me think that maybe it's not real it makes me think that maybe he really isn't this you know good-hearted guy like maybe he is just kind of a that kind of a bad seed that's pretending to be good i don't know i I hope not maturity think it's maturity he was young he had a lot of money of course would it's better i mean in, even in just my personal life, I've met people that have gotten married way too young and they've had families too. And then they, they get divorced and then they said, I'm going to have fun now. Yeah. I'm going to party. I'm like, no, you, you hope I'm, it's not. I'm not trying to be so judgmental, but I guess I am. It's just, you know, <laughs> he enjoyed his life. He got to yeah. a point. He matured. Now he's ready to take his life to the next level. Yeah. As they say, like in quoting Sex in the City, the taxi light is on. <laughs> I know. What is this, number two? You quote <laughs> Sex in the City every time. Is that going to be a trend? Sorry, <laughs> I might have to brush up on my Sex and the City quotes. Oh, no, but okay, so now, now that we on the flip side, is Courtney that bad? Is Blakely that bad? Are they that bad? You know, I don't know that there's any way that we're gonna really know. I think, regardless, their characters on the show, I don't, I just can't imagine anyone being that horrible in in person. What well, horrible? But, they're competitive. Yeah. So are they? Were they brought on the show just to be competitive? I would say no. Okay, they're com- uh, they're just they just have a different strategy, you know. They, you know, maybe this is supposed to be about love, not strategy, right? Correct, correct, correct. But what if let's see? Remember, this is very early in the show, mm-hmm. and the the way it's cut, the way it's edited, they're going to portray you a certain way. And as, if they keep going further, which we think one or both of them is going to, uh, they're going to make it pretty far, and we're going to see see another side. Wouldn't it be much better to see like Courtney redeem herself at the end? I hope so. I mean, like I said, I like her when she's with him. Mm -hmm. I just think that she... Why would you say those kind of things to those girls? I mean, it's one thing to to feel them, like, you know, to kind of say them in your head or something. But what is her point? Like, what is her purpose in antagonizing these other girls? She wants what she wants. <clears throat> but there's she... no but there's no reason to project that onto other people. Like, it's one thing to be aggressive and sure. go after what you want and, you know, not let anybody stop you. But to vocalize it and put other people down and make them feel insecure. And it's just not a normal thing to do, in my opinion. All right. Now comes the cynic part. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's say they move on and they don't get picked. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they follow with a season of Bachelor Pad. And I'm, I'm willing to bet one or both of them are going to be on that show. Oh, absolutely. Michelle Money did it last year. And, and Bachelor, she was, she was the queen bee. She was the villain. And in Bachelor Pad, she actually ended up being quite sweet. Hmm. See, so there was a whole other side. So that's what I'm saying. So they're not necessarily who we think they are that we see on that show. Well, but they're, on the flip side, I was trying to find us some little gossip on The Bachelor, and the only thing I could find was Deadgum Vienna from the other season. And she's just getting worse with every TV show that she gets on. So, I mean, there's really no way that we can know, I think, on this show who they really are until you kind of see them in other other lights, I guess. It's funny. It- in th- that will play out, but uh, you know, I've actually I've I bump, bumped into a few of the contestants from past seasons. Oh yeah, yeah. I ran into one at a bar, and um, he, and he was the same guy that w- that we saw on the show, 
you know, he was that he was he was from a few seasons ago. Uh, so seasons ago, I'm not going to say who he was. Okay. But he was the suave Latin lover guy. Mm. And when I saw him at the bar, he was that same kind huh. of guy. So it you just know, depends. I think maybe the show only enhances who they really are. I mean, I'm, I, don't thi- I don't think that any of the seeds are just planted. I think they're already there. <laughs> and this is just water on the flower. You know what I mean? Or the weed. <laughs> may, may I interject real quick? No. Um, of course. Well, we've had so many reality stars in After Buzz TV, you know, uh, all the way from like, uh, real world to um, to bad girls club and all those kind of the more trashy ones, not like uh, the higher class bachelor I would call, <laughs> but but just saying, um, you know, uh, Leroy from Real World said it best. I think it encapsulates your character. You know what I mean? So uh, as much as we think the producers kind of build you and cut around you, um, the best and the worst is taken. And if you put that out there, it's really who you are. That's true. That's that's what I, that's how it's been explained to me, and I, I I'm starting to adhere to that more. Okay. You know, I I do understand that now. I mean, I've kind of learned a lot more about reality TV since kind of being in LA a lot, and you you do start to realize that yes, there's hours and hours of footage that goes into making a reality show, but if it's out there, it's gonna get put in the show if it's if it's bad or if it's good. So any of the kind of normal in the middle right. is not going to be on the show. It's going to be the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Because that's the only, that's the only exciting things that you can cram into an hour of a show. Cool. Um, so I, I do agree with that. I think that there's, there's something already within a character. It is a character. So when, I, when, you, when we call them characters on the show, they're not necessarily made up characters, but they're definitely a role. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. It, with that said, basically they're not as you know not as bad and not as good, just somewhere right. in the middle. So, so Ben, you got a little bad streak, and Blake and Courtney, well, they probably have a good day or two out of five years. Uh oh, that's the sound for now, predictions. Your after buzz TV <laughs> predictions. All right, so so next week we're going to San Francisco, the city of love, isn't it? It's one of the cities of love. I thought Paris was the city. Of love. Well, it's the American city of love. <laughs> oh, I don't if, know about that. If you can't afford the flight to Paris, you go to San Francisco. Men love. Peace, and love. Peace and love. Thank Peace there we go. That's right. From Hate Street, there we go. That's right. Yeah. What so they're expect? moving the girls to San Francisco. I mean, so so he, so he grew up in Sonoma and San Francisco. Those are kind of, I think, his two. Like homes, right. so this may be San Francisco may be more of his like young home. Does that mean like like maybe where he spent his young younger years as far as young adult? Um, so maybe he'll know kind of some more party. You know, maybe some more of his party atmosphere will come out See, in San Francisco. What I'm already wondering about this: if they're already going to San Francisco, where do his his mom and his sister live? Because they remember- live back in Sonoma. Oh, they, okay, okay, huh. okay, thank you. I think they, like, lived in Sonoma, and then they moved to San Francisco, and then his dad passed away, and then they moved back to Sonoma because that was, like, their heart, okay. you know? So what's going to happen? I mean, I, well, all, I, all, <laughs> all I know is that someone's laid out on the ground. That is scaring and me, I'm, and I don't know who it is, I'm but going somebody, with somebody is apparent. I don't know if it's going to be next week because they teased it last week, too, and it didn't happen this week, so we don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe next week. Um, that a girl's gonna faint. She gets sick at the cocktail party, and I. You think it's Erica? It's definitely a brunette. Definitely, we'll I, see. I'm willing to bet. I I will put money on it. Okay, a dollar. You um, owe me a dollar next week. <laughs> that it's Erica. Okay, <laughs> um, it's on. So then there was a little drama with Brittany, yes. and I'm not. I don't. I hope she doesn't leave, but it kind of seems like she may leave. I don't know. I don't want to spoil anything, but Brittany seems to come downstairs and kind of like take Ben away and like say, "I need to talk to Ben," and she doesn't seem happy. So yeah, but I don't she know held if it's so much a, promise. Yeah, last week, and I mean, I don't know if it's maybe I don't know if it's a family issue. I don't know if it's a personal issue, or if it's something with the show. Maybe she's over the drama, or she just doesn't feel it with him. Who knows? Maybe she has a kid. Maybe she's been married. We don't know that. See, they usually put it up front. The other girls front load it, you know, like um, mm-hmm. Nikki. Yeah, maybe she, she has some tragic story she has to get out. I don't know. Well, she's got something big I that's going on. I think it's more than it's it's something like either marriage, a kid, or she just isn't into him. So, okay. well, wow, that's the wrap, guys. So, once again, where can you be reached? I can be reached on Twitter at Candon Bliss. And you can find me at The Everyday Man at Twitter. And m- make sure to send tweets to AfterBuzz TV. Come back next week to get your bachelor fill and see who gets that final rose. 
Thank you, guys. See you next week. And uh, real quick, I do want to say for fans, because uh, we're getting a lot of tweets and uh, emails about this, the new website is up. It's uh, It looks good. It's not 100% there yet. we got to populate it with all the shows. Speaking of all the shows, there's a ton of shows. So if you're watching The Bachelor, I'm sure there's... And you probably like a lot more than one show. So uh, we're probably covering that one as well. And hey, maybe, maybe you just like The Bachelor. Why not? But I'm sure your friends love other shows. So why not tell them about After Buzz TV? Just saying. I think you should. If you don't, I'm not going to say you're a bad friend, but you're probably a bad friend. <laughs> what? You're not a real fan until you watch the after show on After Buzz. See you next time. From producers Kevin Undergaro and Phil Svitek, engineer DJ Jesse Janity, and the entire After Buzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the After Buzz TV network. If you have questions or comments, be sure to buzz us at info at AfterBuzzTV.com. And you can find us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter by searching for AfterBuzzTV. Buzz, buzz you later! later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzzTV or its owners or principals.